Python is a programming language that is getting more and more popular in research and science, and it is also quite used for web development, software development, etc. In this video, I will provide some inputs on how to get started with Python. In particular, I am going to quickly go through data types, operators, conditional statements and loops, and functions. And at the end, I will give two suggestions that I find particularly useful. Let's start with data types. Like all programming languages, Python has strings. For example, a equals open and close double quotes, this is a string. As we can see, strings are limited by double quotes. To print out the string, we type print and then a in between round brackets, and we press shift return to run the cell of the notebook. We see here that this is the first cell of the notebook that we have run. Then there are lists, which are basically arrays. For example, b equals open and close the squared brackets, one, comma, two, comma, three, and then print b. As we can see in a list, elements are separated by commas in between squared brackets. Something interesting are tuples, which are immutable lists. So, for example, C equals open and close round brackets 1, 2, 3. Print C. To note here is that, differently from lists, in tuples elements are in between round brackets. So, what is exactly the difference between lists and tuples? Well, if I want to change an element of the list B, I can write, for example, B in position 0 equals 4, and then print B. And we see that now B contains 4, 2, 3. However, if I try the same with a C, I get an error. Two things to notice here. First, we access elements with squared brackets. And second, in Python, counting starts from 0. How can we know if a variable is a list or a tuple? Our best friend here becomes the keyword type. Type B tells me that B is a list and type C tells me that C is a tuple. So every time you're not sure what variable type you're dealing with, just use the keyword type. There are obviously other data types. For example, the booleans true or false, written with capital T and F, and dictionaries that are like structs. The operators in Python are very similar to the ones in other languages. Differences that we can observe are about exponentiation, which is a double star, and not equal, which is exclamation mark equal. Conditional statements use the keywords if, elif, and else. So, for example, given that a equals 5 and b equals 10, we can write if b is greater than a, print b is greater than a, if a equals b, print a and b are equal, else print a is greater than b. Two things to notice here. First, after the condition there is always a column. And second, the statements start after an indentation, which usually consists of four spaces. For loops can be written in a few different ways, and the common one is, for example, for x in range 2 to 5, print x. Three things to notice here. The range includes the start number 2, but not the stop number 5. In fact, we print out 2, 3, and 4, but not 5. Second, as in the conditional statements, the statement starts after an indentation. And third, in Python, comments start with a sharp symbol. And finally, functions. To define a basic function, we write def, the name of the function, for example, print favorite food, open and close round brackets, and colon. Then we write the body of the function, for example, my taste equals my favorite food, print my taste. Also in this case, note the indentation inside the function. To call the function, we write print favorite food and open and close round brackets, and we run the cell. Now, if we want to provide an argument, we put it in the round brackets here, for example, my favorite food. To make the function more meaningful, we can update the variable my taste to my favorite food is plus my favorite food and print my taste again. When we call the function, we put the input argument in the round brackets, for example, gorgonzola cheese, and when we run the cell, we can see our favorite food. Finally, to return an argument, at the end of the function, we type the keyword return followed by the variable we want to return, my taste in this case. And when we call the function, we type the variable we want returned in front of the function, 
followed by equal. Because Python is used more and more in science and research, there are plenty of handbooks, blogs, and online and video tutorials, the majority of which are free. Anytime you have an issue, just search for a solution in the internet. A large amount of people has already had that issue before you, and very often you can find a solution online without wasting your time. Also, to learn coding in Python, start translating some of your code from the programming language you are currently using into Python, exactly as you would translate from English to Italian, for example. By doing that, you will not have to focus on the algorithm, but just on the syntax, and get Getting familiar with Python will be easier and faster. Finally, Python allows way more than what we have seen here, object-oriented programming, code testing, etc. And it comes with a lot of packages or libraries developed by various communities. Let's talk a bit about the Python packages in the next video.